In this video, I'll be discussing the project management plan and we'll look at the definition of a project management plan as well as the table of contents of the project management plan. Now, what is a project management plan? It's a comprehensive document that outlines how a project will be executed, monitored and controlled and closed. And it serves as a roadmap for the project management team and stakeholders, detailing the processes, procedures and guidelines that needs to be followed when implementing a project. Now, it's important to remember that the document is not a static document. It's prepared during the planning phase of the project and should be updated throughout your project lifecycle, reflecting any changes in the scope, resources, timelines, risks, etc. Now let's have a look at our table of contents of the project management plan. The first section of the project management plan is our introduction. And this is where we indicate the purpose of the project management plan, as well as your objectives defining the specific goals and objectives that the project is aiming to achieve, as well as our project scope, describing the boundaries of the project, that is what is included and what is excluded in the project. Now the second chapter in our project management plan is our project organization. Now that is the project team structure, which details the organizational structure of the project team, our roles and responsibilities, specifying the responsibilities of each team member and stakeholder that's involved in the project, and then our stakeholder management, identifying the stakeholders, and outlines the strategy of how to engage with communication to the stakeholders. Then our third section is our project management approach. Now that is the project life cycle, describing the different phases of the project. The methodologies and tools. This is where we list the methodologies and tools that will be used to manage the project. And that can be something like a uh, MS project, can be a tool that's going to be used on your specific project. And then project governance. Then our fourth section in our project management plan, that's scope management. This is a scope statement providing a detailed description of the project deliverables and boundaries. Our work breakdown structure, which breaks down the project into smaller manageable components. And then scope verification and control, describing the processes for verifying and controlling the project scope. Now it's important here that the information can either be included in the body of your project management plan or a separate scope management plan and requirements management plan can be prepared and attached as an extra to the document. Our schedule management. Now this is a project schedule can be prepared that includes a detailed timeline of your project activities and milestones. It can also include your milestones as well as our schedule control describing the method of monitoring and controlling your project schedule. Now again, your schedule can be included in your body of your document or a separate schedule management plan can be prepared and attached as an annexure. Now cost management, that's our budget estimate, which provides detailed cost estimate of each phase of the project, a cost baseline, establishing your approved budget for your project, and cost control describing the processes for monitoring and control your project cost. Again, the information can be included in the body of the document or a separate cost management plan can be prepared and attached as an extra. Now your quality management plan. This is our quality objectives, defining your quality standards and objectives of your project. Quality assurance, describing your activities to ensure quality standards are met. And then quality control, which outlines the processes for monitoring and controlling uh, project quality. Now the information can be included in the body of the document or a separate quality management plan can be prepared and attached as an annexure. Then our resource management, we've got resource planning, which identifies the resources um, that is need for the project, including your personnel, equipment and materials. 
your resource allocation, describing how your resources will be assigned to your project tasks, and your resource control outlines the method for monitoring and controlling resource usage. And the information can be included in the body of the document or a separate resource management plan can be prepared and attached as a lecture. Then we've got communication management, our communication plan, which details the communication strategy and methods for the project. Information distribution describes how project information will be distributed to stakeholders. And then performance reporting outlines the process for reporting, project performance and progress. And this information can be included in the body of the document or a separate communication management plan can be prepared and attached as an lecture. Then risk management, our risk identification, which is a list of potential risks that could impact the project. Risk analysis, assessing the impact and likelihood of identified risks. And then your risk response plan, describing the strategies for mitigating and managing risk. Now, the information can either be in the body of the report or a separate risk management plan can be prepared. Procurement management, our procurement planning, identifies the procurement needs and timelines of the project. Vendor selection describes the process for selecting contractors and suppliers. And contract management outlines the method for managing contracts and vendors' performance. Again, your information can be included in the body of the document or a separate procurement management plan can be prepared and attached as a lecture. Then our stakeholder management, stakeholder identification, that's a list of all project stakeholders. Stakeholder engagement, describing the strategies for engaging your stakeholders and your stakeholder communication outline the communication channels and methods for communicating to the stakeholders. Information can either be included in the body of the document or a separate stakeholder management plan can be prepared and attached as an annexure. Then change management, that is our change control process describing the procedure for submitting and approving changes to the project. As well as a change lock, recording all the changes requested. And then change approval outlines a formal approval process for significant changes. And then lastly, our project closeout, which is our closeout checklist. That's a list that uh, indicates all the tasks that needs to be completed before a project is closed. Our lessons learned, documenting the lessons learned throughout the project. And then our final project report, which provides a comprehensive report summarizing the project outcomes. If this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up or you can subscribe to my channel for more project management related videos.